So as you can guess, I'm working on the Ford starter because that seems to be the reason why it didn't start because it started great when we tow put, I mean tow started it. So I did find a couple problems. Some were ground problems and corrosion. The brushes look really good. The armature looks great like it's been rebuilt. But one of the worst problems was a, a binding rear bearing on the back of the armature shaft. So it appears this bearing isn't very good even though right now it's actually turning okay because I've been playing with it. And this larger one on the front is pretty good. So got myself a fag. Only eight bucks and I should be able to press that sucker on there. And then show you how I'm going to fix all the other issues that are just minor that you should look at when you take apart a starter and reassemble it. So I just got the bearing off the back end and it was pretty tightly pressed on but I didn't want to jam any screwdrivers underneath of it since there was only about a millimeter of space because that might screw up my armature poles. So how I did it was I just welded a great big washer to it and then hung the whole thing upside down in a vise and the edges of the vise not squeezing just caught on these edges and then I just took a hammer and a long bolt and hit it and it popped right off with a few wax and maybe even the heat of the welding helped loosen it too but of course before the heat could transfer through to the armature it would have to transfer through those little balls and then this center part so I put it under a cold water tap and cool it off. So that's how you can get a pressed on bearing with no, when there's no relief space to pry it out. And of course putting it back on was just too easy. I just set it on top, set a tool on top of the center part and whacked it with a big hammer a few times, not very hard. And it slipped on. You can see a little space there was there to try to grip it with something and pull it off. So now I just have to insert the armature back into the field magnet housing and when I get to the point then I'll have to pry open those four brushes with my finger and just let it pop itself all back together. So the armature's in now and I've managed to get the brush assembly housing on by prying with two little screwdrivers and opening up the other brush with two fingers and it was difficult to try to hold a camera and do that at the same time so just imagine it. Now to slip the back cover on. Make sure the gasket maybe gets siliconed a bit more on. And what I've done is I've cleaned up the surfaces where the metal of the back cover will make contact with this because two of the brushes are wired in directly to the field magnets and two are wired in directly to ground. So I have to make sure they get a good solid ground here and a good solid ground here when I bolt that to the front housing. Now since the back housing that supports the bearing is part of the circuit that makes the starter motor work by giving it its ground, I even cleaned up the inside edge of the bolts and the threads of the bolts to make sure it would get a ground from around here and a ground through the bolts. And of course I clean the surface around here too to make sure it gets a good ground there. A lot of starter motors have a problem when they go bad of just corrosion, especially if you're in Canada, from salt between there and there because this is aluminum, this is steel, and electrolysis happens. And that's one reason why starter motors don't work suddenly. You, you can hit them with a hammer and they sometimes they'll work quickly, maybe for a short while. A real redneck solution is to crawl into the car and drill a couple little 1 8 holes and put some self-tapping screws in just a little short depth and that'll help make ground and make your car last a little bit longer without spending any money or changing it on a cold day. Now I've added some gear oil inside of that uh, gearbox in there. Looks like it's two staged by the size of it. And I've checked to see everything is spinning freely and I've lubed up the front nose bearing too. And so when I rotate that, those gears are turning effortlessly. And now I know that it's got a new bearing on there and this bearing is quite good. We should have no problems when I put this back together. The only other thing that could be wrong is the field magnets could be a bit cooked and then of course I'd have to change them from another starter motor or get a pair from a rebuilder shop. Now I've just slipped these two housings together and I've installed these two screws and those two screws attach the brush mount housing to the back plate and make sure it gets a good ground so the mating surfaces have been cleaned too. Now these bolts that I've already cleaned up are going to get screwed back in and tighten the housing down evenly so it's not a little bit crooked because it's a little bit crooked the armature rubs and if the bearings are worn out the armature rubs in the field magnets and that causes the starter to make like rough grinding screeching noises sometime and really put the brakes on and slow it down.
Now to reattach the main wire feed to the solenoid output and I've cleaned the surface of this nut, I've cleaned that washer and I've cleaned both surfaces of this copper flange to ensure full amperage transfer. I also noticed that these nuts and bolts used to hold everything together in washers were so rusty so I'm replacing them with almost new ones that I've already cleaned the surfaces of. Because a lot of amps has to transfer through the main wire that goes to the starter motor and oh, I'm sure I was losing half of them because I was probably only making contact on one side and not the other side. Now before you reinstall any starter motor you should always make two checks. Check that the Bendix is working, that it springs freely one way and it grabs the other way. Check that it moves in and out, which is kind of hard to show with one hand. That's what the solenoid does is engage it and moves it out. And of course run it and test the solenoid and the armature drive long before you put it in the car. Because uh, I will even check new ones. Sometimes you get one that doesn't work and I wouldn't want to buy a used one, fix one, or put a new one in and go through all that trouble without testing it first. Another thing you do before you reinstall it is clean all your flanges where it mounts. Not too bad there, but that sure needs some cleaning because you want to get maximum connection for maximum amperage, especially to crank a big diesel. So the ear of the starter is ground. Now let's check the motor drive and I'll put my foot on it because it could flip over. And I'll just jump to the output of the solenoid. That's working good. Now to check that the solenoid makes a good connection inside, so it's got connection to the input of the solenoid. I'll jump the solenoid wire to here. That's the wire that gets power when you turn your key. Yeah, so it engages and winds right out. Well, I'm ready to put it back on and see if that old beast will start on a day that it's 17 degrees Celsius. All right. Ready to go back in now. Only took about seven minutes to get it out. All right, the starter motor is in. It was no problem. I've made sure all the mating surfaces are clean and even cleaned the wire where it goes onto the main feet of the starter. So its mounting flange was perfectly clean so all the amps can get through. If you guys are wondering, the frame on this truck is perfect. It's not as clean and pretty as the one of my old Dodge truck with all the kilometers on it. The Dodge truck still has paint in the frame. Like most of the places, this one has no paint. But it's in awesome condition. Everything else isn't, but it does drive nice, except it's a really stiff ride. It's got lots of leaf springs, that's why. Now let's fire this bitch up and see what's going to happen. Here goes nothing. Do the usual weight. I'll do like bloke did, hold the foot to the floor. starter repair. I have a floor mat here because the battery likes to bounce around and fall down there and get kind of chewed up. Cool. Now let's turn her off and try her again. Oh, before that, by the way, we have a new Cheviac here. It's not quite mine. The owner lives in Kitchener. It's a little bit messed up now since he's been joyriding it, but it was a sweet specimen. Looks like it's been oiled since new. Yeah, he kind of bumped off a few trees. Came out here dent-free. 
oil tints new, had almost no rust, no underbody rust, no frame rust, a little bit under the trim, nothing around the wheel wells. Oh yeah, he pushed in the back bumper too, and this is where Jay rammed him with his Subaru. Damn it, this thing was pristine. He said he paid 600 bucks for it a couple years ago, but burned too much gas. So he brought it to the farm, and he's driving a brand new Volkswagen now. And this thing just runs and starts awesome, but since it's not mine, I don't have the key. Well, let's shut her down and see what's going to happen, start her up again. Okay, I won't even give it a glow plug cycle. Wow, it's never started like that. Now I'm gonna use the truck more often. Sweet. Maybe if I'm not gonna go through any water for a while, I'll take that tube off too. One more time. Cool. Just yesterday that it didn't start, or barely. I need a beer for a reward.